Hi! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll dive deeper into how to control and run the ARM robot sequence using Node-RED and a PostgreSQL database, which I demonstrated in my previous video. As for the robot, I'm still using the same one from the previous videos, a robot with 6 servos. You can find it in the marketplace, where the frame and servos are sold separately. I chose servos with high torque for this setup. To control the robot, I'm using an ESP8266 and a PCA9685 as the servo driver to simplify the wiring and make the programming easier. I'm using the ESP as a Modbus TCP server to communicate with Node-RED, which acts as the client. I've also added the W5500 Ethernet module to ensure a stable connection. As a Modbus TCP server, the ESP will have several coil registers used for different purposes, as well as holding registers to store the position of each servo. This way, the ESP will move the servo motors based on the values stored in the holding registers. On my laptop, I'm using Node-RED as the Modbus client, connected via Ethernet. It will read and write to the holding registers to check the current servo positions and send the command for the servo positions to be executed. Next, to store the sequence of each movement, I save the data in a PostgreSQL database, allowing us to save and recall each movement to send to the robot. To control the robot, program each movement, save the movements, and execute the robot's movement sequence, I've created a Node-RED dashboard. This makes it easier to control and run the robot sequence. So, with this concept, I can easily control and run the robot sequence using Node-RED and the PostgreSQL database. This is an example of using Node-RED to run a robot movement sequence, as I demonstrated in the previous video. The robot sequence starts by reading a trigger from the conveyor, then it picks up the object from the conveyor and places it in a predetermined position. This is the ESP code I used in this video. At the top, you'll find the wiring details I used for connecting to the PCA9685, the W5500 Ethernet module, as well as the input from the conveyor trigger. Make sure the required libraries are installed. Also, configure the IP address correctly so the ESP can connect to the network. I've also shared the code file, Feel free to download the files used. The link is in the video description. You can find the password for the file in this video. I won't be explaining the details of the code here, please refer to the downloaded file. If you need to make any changes or improvements, feel free to modify the code according to your needs. This is the wiring I used to connect the Ethernet module. Next, this is the servo origin position configuration I used in this video. To match the robot configuration shown in the video, please configure the origin position of each servo, from the X servo to the gripper servo. To set the servo to its zero position, you can move it in node red and adjust its robot position according to the pictures. This is the database structure I used in this video, consisting of two tables, task underscore list and movement underscore list. Please create the tables in PostgreSQL according to the structure I've shown for each table. This is the Node-RED flow I used in this video. You can download the JSON file for the Node-RED flow and import it into Node-RED. 
there are a few nodes that need to be installed first. Node Red Contrib Postgrester next for PostgreSQL database connection, and Node Red Contrib Modbus for Modbus connection. For the Modbus connection, ensure the IP address matches the one set in the ESP code, and make sure the ESP is properly connected to the network. Next, this is the node red dashboard created according to the node red flow. On the task page, we can create or edit tasks for each robot movement. One task can consist of several movements. We can create, update, or delete the tasks that have been created. The next page is the Modbus robot control. On this page, we can move each servo using sliders to adjust the servo position to the desired values. To move the servo slowly, you can use the button, allowing for more gradual and step-by-step -step movement. At the bottom, there is also a joystick control for moving the servo using the joystick. On the movement list page, we can select the task for which we will program the movements. After moving the robot to the desired positions, we can save these movements in the database using the insert movement form. This form requires input for the sequence number, delay for movement speed, movement name, and the next sequence number. Additionally, we can also update or delete movements. At the bottom, there is a table displaying the movement list that has been created. We can also execute each movement by clicking on the movement in the table. The robot will perform that movement allowing us to verify if each movement meets the desired criteria. The next page is the Run Robot page. On this page, we can select the task we want to run, and a table will appear showing the movement list created for that task. Similar to this page, I will switch to the Conveyor Burger page, which is similar to the Run Robot page but tailored for conveyor applications. This page includes a conveyor trigger, which starts the robot when the conveyor stops. When the Run Task button is pressed, the robot will start moving from the beginning to the end of the movements, and will continue running the sequence repeatedly. At the bottom, there is a table showing the current position and movements being performed by the robot. To stop the robot's movement, you can press the Pause Task button. To resume, press the Resume button. And to reset the robot to its initial position, use the reset button. Thank you for watching, I hope this video is helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. See you in the next video.